So the uh, topic, I come to you for a lot of my reading suggestions. Yeah. And I noticed you've given me some people that aren't 100% in line with what we believe. And I found that very interesting because I've always told, I've always told my friends and my Bible group that there are some authors that they're, they're good in one area. So like one author might be Holy Spirit, one author might be healing, one author might be forgiveness, one author might be love, one author might be Apostle Paul. So can you, can you speak to me about not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, why we should consider reading people who don't completely believe everything 100% we do? Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let, me, let me be very specific. I'm going to go to my – I'm pulling up my phone because I have my top ten list. Yeah, I love specific. Go for it. <laughs> Here's my top ten list because people ask me pretty regular, so who are your top, top folks, you know? And so lectures by students is Charles Spurgeon, uh, Humilitas by John Dixon, Wild Revivalitaries by Leonard Ravenhill, Knowing God – by J.I. Packer, Holiness of God by R.C. Sproul. Right. On Being a Servant of God, Warren Wiersbe, Radical Cross by A.W. Tozer, and then there's some others. I list those specifically because uh, several of those guys are pretty hardcore Calvinists, once saved, always saved. Um, and and I read them, and I love them because they are they are so insightful. Right. But that doesn't mean they get it right all the time. It belie- I believe that they're trying to, in their mind, they have it right. Right. And, and there are areas that, that they're, they're killing it. Um, R.C. Sproul is one of my favorite writers. But he's absolutely convinced that you can't lose your salvation. Where I, I'm convinced that you can. Right. And so... Um, I listen to him. I read him. I, I watch his preachings because with the exception of, of this one doctrine, like he has a grasp on the scripture that's, that is far beyond my reach. You know, I'm reminded of a, I can't remember who it was. It was John Wesley and somebody else. I can't remember who he was in argument with. Right. One of John Wesley's, um, I would guess MacArthur because everybody argues with John MacArthur. You know, Wesley was a Wesley was an old writer. He's, oh, he's okay. A, but he was he was in an argument with a with a modern day contemporary of his, and one of his followers one of um, one of his followers came up and said, "Do you think we'll see that guy in heaven?" Believing that because his doctrine was different, that they wouldn't see him. And he looked at his follower, the guy that his, he sits under his teaching, and said, no, I don't think we will see him in heaven. And he said, he said he'll be so far in front of us and so much closer to the throne of God than we are. We'll be blessed to even catch a glimpse of him. Right. And so he realized that we don't have to agree on all things. There are things that must be agreed upon for us to be in fellowship. We must believe in the core doctrines of the gospel that jesus christ is the only way to heaven that the bible is infallible that that's the salvation uh, issues yes the salvation right. issue um i do not think we have to be in agreement with um whether or not we speak in tongues or, right you know you're living in it's sad but you're living with less power than you can be living with right if you don't recognize and acknowledge that there is a heavenly language but but that's detriment to you. That's not detriment to your salvation. You know, that's detriment to your, your personal walk right now. Right. And so I don't have a problem with that. One of my favorite authors, every Pentecostal on earth will tell you, I'm going to hell for reading. <laughs> Ooh, wait, can I ask who? It's John MacArthur. Oh yeah. Because he, yeah. He's fire and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He, he speaks foolishly in my mind about speaking in tongues and that kind of thing. Holy spirit issues. But at the same time, yeah. But at the same time, his grasp on 99% of the rest, the, the rest of scripture is spot on. Like he yeah. has incredible insight into the word, I you know? know? Um, and so I, I've got his whole set commentary. See him, 
See him up there? That whole top shelf? That's his whole 500 something dollar set of commentaries up there. Serious? Wow. Yeah, he's got, doesn't he have a uh, study Bible too, right? Yeah. yeah and then John yeah, Piper is yeah. another one who I like. Uh, he was, yeah. Who he could teach, he can do a word by word study. He can take every little word in scripture and discuss it for like hours. How long did yeah. he do? Uh, he did Hebrews for like 54 hours worth of speaking. Who was that? That's John Piper. Yeah. He's got yeah, a big, oh, yeah. on Audible, he has a 54 hour study just on Hebrews. I'm like, yeah. how can you read that deep? That is crazy. It's, the old Puritan writers, man, the old Puritan writers could write for like books and books on two or three verses, you know? Right. We don't want to miss out on the meat because the fat don't taste right. There's a little bit that yeah. is wrong. So you so, be studied in what you believe, be studied in what you know. But now there's, there's, there's an author that Pentecostals love that I don't care for. Um, and that's, uh, and you're not going to like this. Um, I know what you're going to say. Wigglesworth? No. No? Um, you just did a study on him in prayer. Oh, Keith, Keith, I mean, Keith, Hagen. Keith Hagen, yeah. I don't like Keith. I don't like Kenneth Hagen. I mean, Kenneth Hagen, that's it, not Keith. It's Kenneth Hagen, yeah. We've, dis we've disproved scripturally some things he's mentioned. Yeah. We're like, no, that's not true. But everything else is good. <laughs> and so, but, but I've found enough out-of-context scripture in his writings that I don't, I don't read him anymore. Uh, do I believe there's some truth in what he's saying? Yeah. But it's difficult to discern unless you actually read it with a Bible open, what is true and what isn't true. Right, right. So that's dangerous, that, regardless that, of what side of the fence you're on. Exactly. So that's, that's the breaking point. That's when you throw everything out. When you hear something that's not quite in line with the word or it's anti-biblical or whatever, um, once you hear anti-biblical, you're not supposed biblically. You're not supposed to be listening anymore to that person. Yeah. It tells you to run away from those people. They're false teachers. False teachers, yeah. Right, but and then yeah. there's, there's another. It's kind of shaky in that area, though. Yeah, it is. We got to have discernment, though. I, I had a guy tell me one time: discernment isn't the ability to tell right from wrong. It's the ability to tell right from almost right. Because sometimes those things are very, very small. Right, uh, and so. We just, we have to pay attention to what they're saying, know what we believe, be able to back what we believe up in scripture. And at any point, if they are pointing toward, if, if the, the totality of what they are saying and, and preaching points to Jesus, then I'll at least give them audience for a time until I can prove something different. Yeah. Until there's a bump in the road, I keep, I keep on that. Yeah. I'll keep reading or listening. I'll do audio books. Okay, other than God, who is your all-time favorite author? My all-time favorite author. Like if a new book came out today, you're like, oh, my God, it's a new book, even if they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't know. Mine's Wigglesworth. I, I like Wigglesworth, but he, he wouldn't be my guy, I don't think. Um, man, it, he's is dead. That, that Weirdsby guy? It'd probably be, I like Wearsby, uh, but it'd probably be R.C. Sproul. Really? I love R.C. Spr Sproul's writings. I love Piper, uh, Packer. Those guys are all solid, man. I, I, I love their teaching. Do you reread your books? Oh, yeah. Okay, which one have you reread the, re -read the most? <sighs> <laughs> I don't mean to be grilling you, but I, this stuff um, makes me. Probably Why Revival Terries by Leonard Ravenhill. Really? I read that. That's good. I listened. Well, I have the audiobook. But that was good. Yeah. A lot of good yeah. quotes in that. Hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me get, let me show you a book. I'm going to step out of the screen for just a second. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. Where did Pastor Jim go? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. This book right here. I've yeah. read it. I've read it. I don't know how many times. It was given to me just two years ago. I remember that book. For Christmas. Yeah, you talked about it. It's out of print. Um, it was originally, this one was gifted to somebody in 1947. It was originally printed in 1930. Wow. 
and it's just advice, mm-hmm. advice to ministers. The Gospel Minister is the name of the book. And you can still find them every now and then, but you usually find them on like eBay or someplace like that because they are out of print. This is, if you're a minister or you teach a Sunday school class or you, you lead people spiritually any kind of way, hunt down a copy of this book. The, uh, the Gospel Minister by Zimmerman, Z-I-M-M-E-R-M-A-N. Right. Uh, if you'd want to know, if I to tell people one book that I would have you read if you were a minister of the gospel, it'd be this one. Just because it's so enlightening in so many ways. I love the cover. It's so detailed. Right? <laughs> I, was, I was blessed to find this one with a cover on it because every other one, because I've bought several and given them away, <laughs> most of them come without a cover. This is the only one I've ever found with a cover. Wow. How did, yeah. How fortunate he found a cross that would stand still enough that he could draw it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So let me, let me kind of wrap it up in an analogy. Um, I went to my heart doctor and my heart doctor, I brought an energy drink that was just caffeine based and I gave it to him and I showed it to him and he said, it's okay to drink. But then I went to my GP and she said, no, I wouldn't take a chance especially after having a stroke and whatever. And so it's not that my heart doctor doesn't have good information, but there's certain things I got to rely on with my GP, you know, cause my heart doctor doesn't know everything. Right. So that's kind of like how these authors are. They're really good at heart stuff, but they don't know anything about GP stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to put it in terms that an unbeliever would understand. So if, if I'm an unbeliever right now and I'm watching this video, this is the last question I'll let you go. Um, what is the first book you would recommend to a non an unbeliever first time reading? Mark. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, yeah. All right. Mark, you like Mark over John? I, I think I think telling anyone to read the book of John when they first get saved or unsaved is, is a horrible idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's hope not everybody sees this video. <laughs> you tell them to read John? Uh, our whole church is doing that. Yeah. We're studying John, every Bible study, and we're giving the book of John to every new person that comes to our church. Yeah. So they're going to love that one. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea. Let me tell you why I prefer Mark. There's two wow. books I tell every new believer to read in his Bible first. Right. Mark first, because Mark is, is literally the evangelist's gospel. Um, it's 16 chapters. Eight, the first eight are who is Jesus, and the last eight are why he came. Mm-hmm. It's not deeply mystical. It's not deeply spiritual. It's just very factual. It's very, this is who he is. This is what he did. This is why you benefit from what he did. And then, and so it's very easy to understand. And then the second book is James, because once you know who he is and what he did, the next thing you need to know is your responsibility to who he is and what he did. Wow. Okay. So outside the Bible, a newbie wants to just kind of get some information. What would be first book I think I read was the purpose driven life. Purpose driven life is a good book. That may be the first good starter book, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, that, that's as good a book as any. And then dinner with the perfect stranger. Those that's another good one. Yeah. Um, yeah there's a book uh if you're a man i'd recommend read oh man in the mirror no uh, no wild at heart really i haven't heard that one wild at heart it has a it has a a woman's version that was written by the guy's wife called captivating and so if you're a man i'd read wild at heart if you're a woman i'd read captivating um, because it kind of tells the heart of a man and how God uses it and, and how you're, you're called to be a man and it's okay to be a man. So many guys don't come to don't come into faith because they think that all Christians are wimps or they have to give up some portion of their manhood when that's not the case. I, I watched football last night. Football was great last night. Right. <laughs> so yeah, you, I got to say, I was still, I got to say, I still put the cops in the face. You say that again. I said, I got saved while I was still punching cops in the face. So <laughs> that's great. Anyway, I was chewing nails when I got saved, dude. I was spitting out staples. <laughs> so anyway, I'm done. But if anybody wants to chat with you about books, 
you're most welcome, right? You're, yeah, you're absolutely. Welcome. Just just email me if you want the top ten list that I have, or if you want to know, you know, what would you read if you were just gave your life to the Lord, or you're looking for good leadership books. Uh, if you have a category specifically, I I'm not the I'm not the expert, but I read a lot. A lot. Wait, wait, let me say that. A lot. You go on a buying spring right before vacation, and you come out with new books. I'm like, you can go through all those. (laughs) You're like, yeah, I found this at a garage sale. (laughs) It was under a drum set. (laughs) Right, that's exactly right. All right, Pastor, I'll let you go, and I'll see you next week with another topic. Anything in your heart, bring it to the show, and we'll talk about it. All right. Love you, buddy. Love you, dude. Bye-bye. Bye.